what song that is? That's called Wonderful Is Your Name. Let's swing. Let's swing it. <laughs> That's just so wrong. That's just so wrong. Oh, like, pick it up a little. Good evening, grace and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will do what? We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. I am so blessed this evening to be here with you all. I tell you, it's been a marathon day and it is not, excuse me, over yet. I am excited that uh, we are moving forward into the celebration of resurrection. Uh, we live every day in the power of the resurrection, but we are moving towards the celebration of the of the risen Savior. Whoo, I ran over here, y'all, so I'm a little out of breath. Celebrating the risen Savior, but as well, uh, we cannot get to the resurrection without going through the cross and without the acknowledgement of this uh, terrible, torturous week in the life of our Savior, whom would be crucified and risen. And so here we are uh, to center ourselves this evening. And I want to spend a little bit of time with you in the word of the Lord. I bring you greetings tonight from Boston, Massachusetts, here still at the Berkeley College of Music working. And I'm bringing the anointing of the Lord while well, keeping and uh, maintaining the anointing of the Lord uh, in this office uh, this evening. So come on in, like, share, and tag. I think I've caught my breath by now. All right. We're liking, we're sharing, and we're tagging this evening um, as we spend some time in self-reflection. Self-reflection. The other day we talked about willful sacrifice, and tonight we're going to be uh, talking about uh, self-reflection. All right. So this evening I'm going to ask that you would share. I'm sharing now on my own uh, mobile device. I'm going to ask that you all would do the same. I cannot believe, y'all, that we are uh, on the precipice, the very edge of the month of April. 
next week we are going into the month of april this year is flying by and i really believe the lord is doing that because um i'm in the final year of my 30s i really wanted this year to go by really super slow and when i tell you it seemed like i woke up and it was <laughs> january 1st and then turned around the next day and woke up and it's march the 27th i can't believe it but uh god's grace has carried us thus far and god's grace is going to take us the rest of the way Ooh, what a busy day we're here tonight tomorrow we'll be at yale back here in boston on friday baltimore saturday sunday yale again on monday and tuesday wednesday boston and Wednesday night, Kentucky, Thursday, Kentucky. It's just the beat goes on and on and on. Won't y'all pray my strength in the Lord? But as I tell you all the time, there's nothing that brings me greater joy than to serve this community in this space. And so come on in. I'm going to ask that you would like, share, and tag. Woo, y'all, it has been a day. Have mercy, oh God. And the beat goes on and on and on. But I know the saints is praying for me. They had me on their mind. They took the time and prayed for me. All right. I love everybody. So glad that you all are uh, in the service of the Lord with me uh, this evening. Tonight, uh, we're talking about self-reflection. So get it in the room, everybody. As the old saints would say, come on, get in the service. Come on and get in the service tonight, the service of the Lord. And uh, we're blessed. We're blessed. I'm looking forward to sharing with you in our Easter celebration, resurrection celebration on Sunday. Um, for those of you that are going into in-person worship, I encourage you to do that uh, on Sunday, celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. For those of you that aren't able to get in in person on Sunday, you can join me in worship ministry at the Morning Star Church in Baltimore, Maryland. I'll be there in worship on Sunday at 7.15, 9.15 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. Um, all right. So come on in. Let's like, let's share. Good evening, Minister Janine. Good evening, uh, Deacon Shropshire. Good evening, Kay Renee. Good evening, good evening, uh, Minister Tangela. Come on in, y'all. Good evening, Minister Monique. Come on in, come on in, everybody. Come on in, everybody. I want us this evening to engage in self-reflection. Um, I've been just trying to ground myself in this week, as I told you all. Um, I haven't uh, engaged uh, the Lenten season with any sort of traditional ritualistic uh, fast, and not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, I believe that certain seasons in the holy calendar, in the liturgical calendar, invite us to engage um, our lives uh, differently. So for those who are giving up things for Lent, I don't throw any shade at that. Um, I believe that that practice is valid and valued uh, if you are engaging it, not just from the standpoint of a ritualistic perfunctory uh, activity, but that you are really doing it out of the spirit of penance and sacrifice. And in light of the sacrifice that the Lord made for us, we give certain things down. Now, the reality is, is that if you, if, if we're giving, a, if we're giving up things that are sin anyway, um, that is not a Lenten sacrifice. <laughs> uh, the, the, the Lenten sacrifice uh, requires us to give things that aren't necessarily sin, but that uh, bring us worldly pleasure or uh, fleshly uh, enjoyment, right? So there are many people who give up coffee and give up fried food and give up so on, uh, this and that. They give up watching television or social media, those types of things that are not necessarily sin, uh, but that are self-pleasing so that they can uh, re-engage or even not if it's re-engagement so that they can uh, clearly uh, provide a path uh, to uh, have dialogue and communion with God uh, through those moments and those moments where the flesh gets weak and you want some sweets. And those are the moments where you remember uh, the sacrifice of Christ and then you engage uh, in prayer or meditation or scripture reading. In those moments where you would scroll, you find yourself doing something else that is life-giving and that honors God uh, with that time. And so I did not engage in a Lenten fast of sorts, but in this time of Holy Week, as I spoke uh, with us about last week, uh, it's 
I, I believe we are uh, we, we would miss uh, such a great opportunity uh, to honor the sacrifice of Christ if we didn't take a moment uh, to just reflect on what Jesus did for us and how what Jesus did for us ought to impact our uh, behavior, how it ought to impact our thought life, how it ought to impact um, how we reason and uh, the consciousness in which we live. And so I want to focus tonight on self-reflection, taking a look at ourselves, a good hard look at ourselves and asking God in light of the sacrifice uh, that Jesus made for us on Calvary, asking God as David did in Psalm 51 to create in us a clean heart and to renew in us, here it is, a right spirit. What does that word right in the Hebrew mean? That word right in the Hebrew uh, means steadfast, a sense of loyalty, a sense of faithfulness. Uh, Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15 that we have been called uh, in light of the victory that we have in Christ, that we have been called to be steadfast, to be unmovable to always abound in the work of the Lord, knowing uh, that our labor is not in vain. There are two scriptures that I want to look at. One is 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, uh, beginning at verse number 23. 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, uh, beginning at verse 23. You ready? If you're ready for the word, I need you to type it in the chat. Ready for the word. Keep those thumbs up and those hearts coming. All right. First Corinthians chapter number 11, beginning at verse number 23. Here are now the words of Paul in first Corinthians 11. It says, for I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself on the night uh, when he was betrayed. The Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this is the cup or this cup is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me and as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Notice this. He didn't say that you're announcing the resurrection. No, no. He says when you take of the bread, take of communion, when you take of the, the Eucharist, right, that that uh, that middle part of that word Eucharist is charis, which means grace. And the greatest means of grace is the shed blood and broken body of our Lord. When we take of this, when we when we ingest those elements, uh, uh, we are showing forth and announcing the Lord's death until the Lord comes again. Verse 27. So anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Verse 28. That is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. Verse 29, for if you eat the bread or drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ, you are eating and drinking God's judgment upon yourself. And that is why many of you are weak and sick and some have even died. But if we would examine ourselves. Oh my God, are y'all reading this with me? If we would but examine ourselves, we would not be judged by God in this way. Yet, when we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned along with the world. He says, listen, the, the, the drinking of the, the cup and the eating of the bread must be accompanied by two things, honor and self-examination, right? Honor of God, here it is, through 
self-examination. Right. This scripture, I think, was perhaps one of the uh, most fear inducing scriptures that I ever heard as a child. I mean, you had people who refused to take communion because of reading first Corinthians 11, 28 because they felt like because they hadn't dotted every I or crossed every T or because they had made some mistakes or they were calling to remembrance their transgressions and their imperfections and their flaws and their faults that um, they would somehow die or get sick (laughs) if they took communion, right? So you literally had people who would pass the communion tray by because they didn't want to bring upon themselves what they felt to be or what they believed to be the judgment of the Lord because they weren't right. That is not the proper interpretation of 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. 1 Corinthians chapter number 11 is not to... uh, an effort by Paul under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to deny people the opportunity of partaking in the table of the Lord because Christ has invited all of us to his table. I need to say it one more time. Christ has invited all of us to his table because he didn't just die for the Jews. He died for the Gentiles as well. His blood was shed to redeem the entire world. Jew, Gentile, Pharisee, Sadducee, Zealot, white, black, short, uh, tall, skinny, fat, whatever category, ism, ality, whatever label, the Lord Jesus died for us all. The Lamb of God who has come to take away the sins of the world. And all who would but confess him with their mouths and believe upon the Lord in their hearts would be saved, right? And as the old school Baptist preacher would say, and sealed until the day of redemption. In other words, there is nothing we can do to be plucked out of the hand of God. So once you and I have committed our lives to God in faith, through belief in our heart and confession through our mouth, we are invited. We we, we are invited. We are part of family. We are invited to the table, right? So even if, oh, I'm about to mess up. I'm about to mess up. Even if you sinned in thought, word, or deed on your way to church and communion is being served, you are not disqualified from going to the table. Oh, I need to say that one more time because that that messed somebody up because there's somebody here that has a guilt complex and you've been denying yourself the opportunity to accept the very means of grace that you and I could not pay for. How are you going to uninvite yourself to a meal that somebody else has already paid for? Oh, y'all don't want to talk with me. Let me say it again. You, You uninvite yourself to the greatest meal that you will ever partake of. I'm not talking about Capitol Grill, Del Frisco's. I'm not talking about crustacean in LA and San Francisco. I'm not uh, talking about, uh, what's some other nice restaurants out here to talk about the real ones. Uh, I ain't talking about Roof Chris, that's debatable. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about any of those places. I'm talking about the meal of all meals, the bread of life. I'm talking about the blood that was shed for us, that we are now through whatever means, whether it's wine, whether it's grape juice, whatever, to, to, we are brought in remembrance of the death of Jesus, right? And he invites all of us who are part of the family to partake, right? It's never based on our righteousness. Okay, I need to say it again. Our invitation to the table of the Lord is never, will never be based on our righteousness. 
Our righteousness, brothers and sisters, is as filthy rags, always will be. On our best day, we still ain't nothing more than a filthy rag. Let me say it. Let me say it again. On our best day, on the day where we felt, you know what, I got it right today. Even if we happen to get it right that day, it's still a filthy rag. He's already done. Jesus has already done the heavy lifting. He's he's issued the great invitation to us. So this is not about disqualification. It's about the spirit in which we live when we approach. Yes the ingesting of the elements, but also when we live in a sacramental space, right? Talking about the sacraments or the ordinances, right? We, we, we should live every day in the spirit of the Eucharist, in the, in the spirit of honor of the grace that was extended to us on Calvary through our Lord. That is the spirit in which we ought to live. Which means that every day we ought to be honoring the death of the Lord, but especially in Holy Week, honoring the death of the Lord through self-examination. Taking a good, hard look at ourselves. Not so that we can get ourselves together. Because let me tell you something. If you and I possessed the power to get ourselves together, right? If, if we possessed that power to get ourselves together, we would already be together. There is nothing that we can do to get ourselves together because many of us tried and then we thought we had ourselves together, still ain't have ourselves together. Oh, I don't have no witnesses. Y'all mighty quiet out there in the chat. Uh, yeah, it still didn't have myself together. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But 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 self-examination is about us presenting ourselves to God. Like, let's take inventory here. And Lord, I place myself before you at the altar because I don't want to ever live life, approach communion, approach the Eucharist, approach the holiest time of year in the spirit of arrogance and hubris and pride. Paul says it here, let a person examine themselves. Take inventory. It says examine yourself. You, we, we dishonor the Lord when we refuse to examine ourselves. And when we dishonor the Lord by approaching life outside of the space of self-examination, that is when we eat and drink damnation unto ourselves. That is when we invite God's judgment. Is when we eat and we drink and we exist in the space of arrogance and pride and that we don't consider the worth of God juxtaposed against our own faults and failures and flaws and flailings. So Paul sets it up here for us in the context of coming to the Eucharistic table, coming to the table of the Lord, the celebration of Holy Communion, that great sacrament, that great ordinance, right? But that's the space in which we ought to live all the time. It, it, it was the lack of self-examination, brothers and sisters, that is what took Judas down. Oh no, he, he, he couldn't bear, he couldn't. And, and once he finally examined himself, he killed himself. Couldn't bear up under it. He sold out and betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. After having the meal. Right? He, he went into the meal with in sinister intent lodged in his heart. He's like, no, 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 no. This, this is a heart matter. Present your heart to God before you engage in the announcement of his death and the celebration then of his resurrection. Psalm 139. 
Psalm 139. Psalm 139. I love this psalm because it makes it plain for us. Psalm 139. If this is helping y'all, I need y'all to say something to me out there. I, I want to, I actually want to back up into it from verse 19, 19 uh, to the end of uh, verse 24, New Living Translation. I want you to notice the shift in his prayer in Psalm 139. He said, oh God, if you would only destroy the wicked, get out of my life, you murderers. They blaspheme you. Your enemies misuse your name. Oh Lord, shouldn't I hate those who hate you? Shouldn't I despise those who oppose you? Yes, I hate them with total hatred for your enemies are my enemies. That's verse 19 through 22. But watch verse 23. Verse 23, he says, search me, oh God. Okay. Notice he he has this moment where he's transparent about how he feels about the people who have set themselves in opposition to God and thereby set themselves in opposition to him. He said, listen, I got enemies in God. I know they're your enemies too. Should not not hate them with perfect hatred. Those that hate you and those that hate me, those who misuse your name that are in my life. He said, get them out of my life. But notice in verse 23, he shifts. He says, now, Lord, search me. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Notice he and, and drops the mic. The psalm ends with him saying, Lord, even if you don't deal with them the way I think you should, deal with me. Right? I don't know what caused that shift in consciousness. He's saying, Lord, if these aren't the thoughts I'm supposed to think, then deal with me. If these are the thoughts I'm supposed to think, help me not to be so fixated on other people that I don't uh, concentrate on, on, on me. God, I'm presenting myself to you. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to search my heart. Old school gospel song say, you know, Lord, whether I'm right, you know, Lord, whether I'm wrong, you know, Lord, whether I'm right or wrong. So search me while I'm down here praying, Lord, search my heart because, you know. That's one of the most intimidating things. People be like, oh, well, the Lord knows my heart. Don't just throw that around because he really does. And people say that a lot. As if the intentions and thoughts of their hearts are actually pure when they're not. David says in Psalm 139, Lord, search me and whatever it is in me that offends you, point it out to me. Oh, notice, he doesn't even say get rid of it for me. Mm -mm. He says, Lord, I want you to point it out for me. He says, you point and then lead me in the right way. The word I want to, to, to zero in on here for just a moment is the word anything. Anything in me, God, that offends you. Could it be that some of us have become okay with housing things within us that offend God? Oh, it's quiet through here. I'm going to say it again. Could it, could it be that some of us have become okay with becoming uh, vehicles that transport divine offense? That's right, Mama D. Show me me. Point it out to me. You know, oh, well, one of the most humbling, even humiliating moments is when you are walking in offense with other people because of what you feel like they've done to you. And then the Lord shows you, you. 
He's like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. And, and, and it's like, how dare, how dare we even think to concentrate on somebody else when we as well are a, 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 a transporting vehicle of things that offend God. No, David said, Lord, point out to me anything. It could be the smallest thing. It could be something I don't even know I'm carrying. Lord, point it out and then lead me. Lead me into the way of life everlasting. Old school saints would say, I want to be right. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. So search us, O oh God. Search me, O oh God. Know my thoughts. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. And Lord, see if there be any wicked way in me. Point it out to me, especially this week. And God, lead me in the way of everlasting life. Is there anybody in the virtual sanctuary tonight that can join me in that prayer? Notice, I didn't even say us. Because in this moment, I'm, I'm in company and in communion and community with all the rest of the saints. Preacher, preaching, teaching, all of that. Lord, show me me. Anything that's in me. Point it out to me so I can see it. So I no longer have an excuse to say, I don't know. Point it out to me and then God help me, lead me in the way of everlasting life. Uh, Self-reflection. Tomorrow, Monday, Thursday begins uh, the the agonizing moment of moments that lead to the cross. Of course, the betrayal of Judas that happens on Holy Wednesday is huge. But on Monday, Thursday, he goes into garden of the Garden of Gethsemane and prays that uh, iconic prayer, Lord, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. Because it's a bitter cup. He says, I don't want to drink it. And then he's arrested. And then uh, we move toward Good Friday. So as we move toward this, this, this acknowledgement of this season, let's do it with a heightened consciousness and an awareness that the Lord has called us into self-reflection. That's all I got for us tonight. Lord, show us us. Show me me. Point it out to me and then lead me. Lead me into the way of everlasting life. This is the word for God's people. I pray tonight that you were blessed. I thank God for you. I thank God for the opportunity uh, to minister to you uh, this evening. Uh, if you were blessed, come on, throw some hearts and thumbs up in the chat. All right. I've got about five minutes before I've got to get to my next assignment here at work. Uh, but I'm going to ask tonight that those of you who you were here for the first time, please let us know that so that I can acknowledge you. And if it is your first time, please feel free to follow us here, TDCC, uh, True Destiny Christian Community on Facebook, True Destiny Christian Community on YouTube. Please also feel free to follow me, John Paul McGee, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, and on TikTok. All right. Uh, follow us there. And if it's your first time, we want to acknowledge you. For those of you who have not yet connected with us in our texting list, uh, please connect by uh, dial I'm dialing. I'm tired. By, by texting the word connect to 386-222-1070. Again, that's the word connect 386-222-1070. We're connecting now. For those of you tonight that were blessed by the word and you want to give, and so we're placing those opportunities for you on the screen. Even now, you can text giving to 386-222-1070. Again, giving to 386-222-1070. God bless you, Robert Chisley. I believe this may be your first time. If it is, we are grateful and thankful for you being here in our midst this afternoon, this evening. You can also give PayPal info at truedestinyonline.com. All right, info at truedestinyonline.com. You can also text your gift this evening. Uh, we are uh, inviting the saints uh, this week over this period of Holy Week to sow a seed of generations. The Lord su the Lord suffered and died to save generations. And so we're calling all who are able uh, to give and to sow a $40 seed uh, this evening 
into the community. And those of you who can stand with me in that gift, I invite you to do so. And thank God for those of you who are standing in faith. Uh, this week, we don't give to receive uh, because Jesus paid it all uh, and all to him we owe. And so we thank the Lord uh, for the opportunity to give. So listen, we'll be back together tomorrow morning. Uh, we'll be back together tomorrow morning at 645, at 645 for prayer. And I'm looking forward uh, to us being able to share in prayer and the word tomorrow morning. All right. Have an amazing evening on purpose. I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Please remember, stay in this space. Uh, hold on to this word. Living in uh, the space of self-reflection. I love everybody. Have an amazing night in Jesus name.